Lions 1 0 p.m. Texans Packers 1 0 p.m. Vikings Lions 1 0 p.m. Saints Dolphins 1 0 p.m. Falcons Week 6 of the NFL season offered several games with wild finishes, but no story has been bigger than the injury to Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers. Stay here for live scores, updates and analysis Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers being taken off the field on a cart after sustaining a broken right collarbone in the first quarter against the Vikings. Brad Rempelusi Today Sports, via Reuters A broken collarbone sidelines Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers took a vicious hit at the end of a play in the first quarter against the Minnesota Vikings and could be out for the remainder of the regular season with a broken collarbone. It was the third potentially season-ending injury to one of the NFL's marquee players in the last two weeks, with Rodgers joining J.J. Watt of the Houston Texans and Odell Beckham Jr. of the Giants on the shelf. With Rodgers out, and Sam Bradford ruled out before the game for the Vikings, Sunday's rivalry matchup turned into a battle of backup quarterbacks between Minnesota's Case Keenum and Green Bay's Brett Hundley. Keenum was better and got a great deal of help from Jarek McKinnon, propelling the Vikings to a 2,310 victory. Damn I hope at Aaron Rodgers 12 is OK the league is better when HES healthy. Praying for you, Richard Sherman at Sheman underscore 25 October 15, 2017 on the play in which Rodgers was injured, he rolled out to his right and released the ball just before Anthony Barr drove him into to the ground. Rodgers reacted angrily to the late hit, but no penalty was called, and after a short evaluation in the team's medical tent, he was taken off the field on the back of an injury cart. The Packers 42 announced just after halftime that Rodgers' right collarbone had been broken, and they left open the possibility that the injury could be season-ending. Rodgers broke his collarbone during the 2013 season and missed seven games. Asked to fill in for Rodgers, Hundley, a third-year backup out of UCLA, got off to a rocky start by throwing an interception on his first pass of the game. But his second pass was a 14-yard touchdown to Devante Adams, which briefly gave Green Bay a tie and some optimism. But Hundley never truly got going, completing 18 of 33 passes for 157 yards, one touchdown and three interceptions. Minnesota 42 hardly looked explosive, but thanks to solid work from McKinnon, three field goals from Kai Forbath, and a rash of Packers injuries, the Vikings were able to win fairly easily. McKinnon contributed a 27-yard touchdown catch and a 3-yard touchdown run as part of a game in which he had 99 yards from scrimmage. His one misstep in the half was a fumble, which was returned 63 yards by Clay Matthews 3, setting up Green Bay's lone touchdown. Keenum had 239 passing yards, 97 of which went to Adam Thielen, and Minnesota got two interceptions from its celebrated secondary. Beyond Rodgers, the Packers also lost several other key starters to injury, including David Bacteri left tackle, Brian Bulaga right tackle, Lane Taylor left guard and Quinton Rollins cornerback. In his post-game news conference, Packers coach Mike McCarthy tried his best to not dwell on the injury to Rodgers, stating the obvious, the loss of Aaron Rodgers definitely hurts, he said. As a football team, we have to move forward. Gutted for at Aaron Rodgers 12. Hate to see in. J.J. Watt at Schwatt October 15, 2017 McCarthy said he had confidence in Hundley as his starter going forward with Joe Callahan as his backup. Hundley, 24, was a breakout performer for the Packers in the 2015 preseason after he had been drafted in the fifth round of that year's draft. He was initially a third stringer, behind Rodgers and Scott Toltzian, and then became Rodgers' primary backup last year. Brett Hundley 7 is expected to take over the Packers' starting quarterback after an injury to Aaron Rodgers. Brace Hamel Garnusa today sports, via Reuters in his time at UCLA, Hundley became the Bruins' career leader in total offense and passing touchdowns, with 75. He also ran for 30 touchdowns and had a decent performance at the 2015 NFL Combine, running the 40-yard dash in 4.63 seconds. Doubts that he could handle being a pocket passer depressed his value, letting the Packers pick him up so late in the 2015 draft. Rodgers was not the only starting quarterback sidelined Sunday. Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterback Jameis Winston sustained a right shoulder injury in the second quarter against the Arizona Cardinals and was replaced by Ryan Fitzpatrick for the rest of the game.
Fitzpatrick led the Buccaneers to 27 fourth-quarter points, but the comeback fell short in a 3,833 loss. Kaepernick files a grievance against the NFL with Aaron Rodgers out long-term, the possibility remains that the Packers could seek help from a veteran free agent. One possibility Colin Kaepernick, the former quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers who last season started a wave of sideline protests by kneeling during the playing of the national anthem. He grew up as a fan of the Packers. Kaepernick has filed a grievance against the NFL, accusing all 32 teams of colluding to keep him out of the league. He opted out of his contract with the 49ers in March and has not found a team willing to sign him. His grievance will be heard by an arbitrator under the terms of the labor agreement between the union and the league. Kaepernick's lawyer, Mark Giragos, said in a statement that Kaepernick had exhausted every possible avenue with all NFL teams and their executives. Ken Belson read more about Kaepernick's grievance here. The Steelers' defense shut down Kareem Hunt and the Chiefs for most of their game in Kansas City. J. Biggest staff you see today sports, via Reuters the Steelers hand the Chiefs the first loss. The Kansas City Chiefs' perfect start to the season came to a jarring halt in a 19-13 loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Nothing went right offensively for the Chiefs. They got into an early 20 deficit when a snap sailed over quarterback Alex Smith's head and threw back of the end zone for a safety, and that proved to be an omen for how most of the game would go. Smith completed 19 of 33 passes for 246 yards while Kareem Hunt, the NFL's leading rusher, managed only 21 rushing yards. Other than a few solid drives late in the game the Chiefs seemed almost comically incapable of moving the ball against Pittsburgh. A late 57-yard touchdown pass from Smith to DeAntoni Thomas got the Chiefs back into the game, and Kansas City's defense, which came through with huge fourth-quarter plays nearly every week during the Chiefs' 50 start, almost came away with a late interception. But the Chiefs saw their luck run out as a tipped ball ended up in Antonio Brown's hands and he sprinted for a 51-yard touchdown that put the game out of reach. That the Chiefs were in the game at all was a testament to how well their defense played because their offense was non-existent for more than three quarters. The Chiefs did not get a first down until there were less than two minutes remaining in the first half and Pittsburgh seemed to have an answer for Kansas City's game-changing speed at every turn. Offensively, the Steelers' 42 went back to the greatest hits by relying on Levon Bell and Brown. It was the first time since Week 7 of 2015 that the Steelers' stars each managed 100 or more yards rushing or receiving in the same game. Bell's 184 yards on 32 carries were a big part of Pittsburgh controlling the clock for more than 36 minutes. It may not have translated to many points against the Stingy Chiefs' defense, but it was enough to get the team a victory. Benjamin Hoffman Jets tight end Austin Seferi and Jenkins was ruled to have fumbled into the end zone on video review overturning a late Jets touchdown against the Patriots. Bill Costroon Associated Press A controversial replay hinders the Jets' rally against the Patriots. On the way toward what he had the makings of another unwatchable season, toward securing a high draft pick and the prospect of selecting a franchise changing quarterback, the Jets have resolved to think the unthinkable. Not only would they be competitive, but they would win a bunch, too, perhaps even against New England. The teams did, after all, enter Sunday with the same record 32 and tied, with Buffalo, atop the AFC East. And against the Patriots, the Jets jumped to an early 140 lead and the hopes of an upset didnt expire until there were 12 seconds remaining, after Josh McCann's pass on fourth hand 16 from the New England 49 sailed incomplete. In the end, the Jets lost 2,417 because they committed costly penalties and turnovers, and because the Patriots have Tom Brady and the Jets do not, and in part because of an overruled fourth-quarter touchdown that demanded a more sufficient explanation than they received and replays showed. Instead, Brady earned his 187th regular season win of his career, breaking a tie with Peyton Manning and Brett Favre for the NFL record. He threw for 257 yards and two touchdowns to Rob Gronkowski, one at the end of the first half to tie the score at 14-14 and the other at the beginning of the second half to give the Patriots a 2,114 lead. Ben Shigel read more about the Jets' loss here.
Michael Campanaro returning a punt for a touchdown late in the second half, helping the Ravens send the game against the Bears to overtime. Gail Burton Associated Press The Bears win a wild game against the Ravens. A touchdown pass from a running back, a kickoff return for a touchdown, an interception return for a touchdown, a punch return for a touchdown, and a 53-yard run in overtime were all parts of the Chicago Bears wild 2,724 overtime victory against the host Baltimore Ravens. It was a 103 game in Chicago's favor at halftime thanks to a fluttering 21 yard touchdown pass from the team's backup running back Tarek Cohen to Zach Miller. The Bears stretched their lead to 173 when Mitchell Trubisky hit Dion Sims for a 27 yard score, but that was when things got interesting as Bobby Rainey of the Ravens returned the ensuing kickoff 96 yards for a touchdown. While neither team looked particularly sharp all game, Adrian Amos scored on an interception for the Bears, and the Ravens were able to force overtime thanks to a 77-yard punt return touchdown from Michael Campanaro and a two-point conversion. That was where Baltimore's magic ran out. In overtime, the teams traded punts, and then Jordan Howe reeled off a 53-yard run that was the key to a 71-yard drive, setting up Connor Bath to win the game with a 40-yard field goal. The win will be credited as the first of Trubisky's career, but it was hardly a one-man effort. Benjamin Hoffman ran the NFL New Orleans holds off Detroit Miami stuns Atlanta, running backs Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara combined for 237 yards from scrimmage. The Saints' resurgent defense forced five turnovers and scored a franchise record three times, and New Orleans took a 5,238 victory over the visiting Detroit Lions in a game full of crazy bounces and unusual plays. New Orleans 32, which has a winning record for the first time since its last playoff season in 2013, built a five-touchdown lead, only to wind up gutting out a remarkable bid by Detroit to pull off the greatest comeback in NFL history. Detroit 33 scored four straight touchdowns, including one on a punt return by Jamal Agnew and another on Ashawn Robinson's interception near the Saints' goal line, in less than 15 minutes off the game clock to pull as close as 4,538 with 641 to go. But after Agnew muffed a punt and barely got it out of the end zone, Saints defensive end Cam Jordan scored on virtually the same type of play as Robinson when he got his hand on Matt Stafford's pass from the end zone. App J. Cutler threw a pair of touchdown passes, Cody Parkey kicked a pair of field goals and the Miami Dolphins 32 overcame a 170 halftime deficit to stun the host Atlanta Falcons, 2017. Matt Ryan had a crucial interception with the Falcons in position to at least attempt a tying field goal. Cordria Tankersley got a hand on a pass intended for Austin Hooper and Richard Jones swooped in to make the game clinching interception with 39 seconds remaining. App Farrow Cooper returned the opening kickoff 103 yards, one of two special teams touchdowns that helped the visiting Los Angeles Rams beat the Jacksonville Jaguars 2,717. The Rams 42 also blocked a punt for a score and a 10-point lead in the first half. The Jaguars 33 botched a decent chance to tie the game early in the fourth period when Blake Bortles fumbled on one play and then threw an interception on the next. Leonard Fournette, the Jaguars' rookie running back, had 130 yards, including a 75-yard run for his seventh touchdown of the season. App Deshaun Watson threw for 225 yards and three touchdowns, becoming the first rookie in NFL history with at least three touchdown passes in three straight games, helping give the Houston Texans a 3,317 victory over the Cleveland Browns. Watson has thrown 15 touchdown passes this season, the most in NFL history by a rookie in a team's first six games. Cleveland made yet another change a quarterback this week, benching the rookie Deshaun Kaiser for Kevin Hogan to make his first NFL start. The Browns 06 lost the 16th in a row on the road. App Washington quarterback Kirk Cousins threw for two touchdowns, ran for a score, and also had an interception as part of an inconsistent performance against his former mentor Kyle Shanahan's win the San Francisco 49ers in a 2,624 victory. The Redskins 32 blew a 17-point lead before barely holding on.
The visiting 49ers 06 remain unsettled at quarterback Shanahan benched Brian Hoyer for the rookie CJB that who threw for 245 yards, a touchdown and an interception and nearly led an impressive comeback. With the 49ers down by two points in the final minute B that led them toward field goal range. He was intercepted by Kendall Fuller on fourth down to seal the result. San Francisco has lost five consecutive games by three points or fewer. Shanahan said that B that did enough to earn the starting job for next week's game against the Dallas Cowboys. App Nick Novak kicked a 32-yard field goal on the final play of the game and the Los Angeles Chargers took advantage of a key missed extra point by Giorgio Tavecchio to beat the Oakland Raiders, 17-16. The Chargers 24 had been done in by poor kicks this season, losing twice on misses by the former kicker Young Hoku. Novak missed a 48-yard field goal in the first quarter, but it was a missed extra point by Tavecchio, after a high snap by John Condo early in the fourth quarter, that proved to be the difference in a fourth straight loss by the host Raiders 24. Oakland quarterback Derek Carr, who missed last week's game with a broken bone in his back, threw for just 171 yards with two interceptions and a touchdown. App several San Francisco 49ers players took a knee during the national anthem before the team's game against Washington. Jeff Berkusi today sports via Reuters players continue to kneel during the anthem. The controversy over players demonstrating or protesting during the national anthem had largely died down, but it was reignited last week when Vice President Mike Pence walked out of the Indianapolis Colts game because of kneeling players on the San Francisco 49ers sideline. And on Sunday, several teams had players kneeling. During the week, Commissioner Roger Goodell 